We are Brooke and Gary. One Life has been our home for the past two years and over 7,000 nautical miles. In our last episode, we went for a dinghy adventure down Rio Sierpe, where we crashed our drone, recovered, and repaired it the best we could. We then made our way to Bahia Ubita, where we were told by a park ranger we had to leave immediately. Which brings us to the start of our next episode. Sailing in Costa Rica is beginning to be a bit of a challenge. Feeling a bit unsettled about being forced out of Uvita, we pulled anchor as the sun was setting and headed out to sea. We were warned by other sailors that sailing in Costa Rica was a challenge, and we were beginning to see why. We got out of the anchorage and got the sails up just in time for a little rainstorm to come. Well, it's about 1 a.m. and we are sailing now. We motored for like the first five hours because there was absolutely zero wind. But we've got about 10 knots of wind now, so we rolled out the head sail and we're cruising along at four knots. We've only got about eight miles left to our destination, which means we're probably gonna get there before sunrise. So we'll see whether we just uh, slow down and wait until daylight to enter the anchorage or maybe we'll just go in and drop the anchor on the outside of the anchorage without getting in too close. It's been raining on and off for the past couple hours but staying dry as I can under the dodger. It's not too bad. Okay so it's about 1 30 a.m and we pulled in our head sail and now we just have our staysail out and we're pretty much just drifting. We're about six miles from where we're planning to anchor in Cuepos. So we're just gonna kind of relax here for the next few hours. And then when the sun comes up, we will head the rest of the way into the anchorage. It is 5 a.m and the sun is starting to come up so it's time for us to go ahead and get on in the anchorage we have about four miles to go and only about four knots of wind so we're gonna bring in our stay cell and motor over and get anchored it's really calm out here this morning <laughs> it is jumping. Wow. Just hooked onto a little mahi this morning coming in. Want the gaff or no? I don't know. Only if big. I do want to have some fresh fish though. Yeah, we do. Dirtiest one I've ever seen a mahi in. <laughs> it's a decent size. Watch. Get it in the boat. Yes. Now that is a good way to start your day. <laughs> Cuepos. The shore access is pretty tricky and in fact one day Gary swam to shore. Yeah so far cruising Costa Rica has been a little bit difficult landing the dinghy um, and finding a spot that we can leave the boat. We're making the best of it. We're making it work. You need me to help you get it out? Our 
great. So Gary just dropped me off at the beach. He's gonna swim in. <laughs> There's always a way to get things done. And then yesterday we had to check out and go to the port captain's office to get our zarpe to our next port, which is Punta Arenas. And the only way we could get to shore is by paying the marina $40 to park our dinghy there um, for a few hours. So it was a weird vibe there and we've never experienced having to one, give our documentation for <laughs> our dinghy, and number two, $40 is quite a lot of money to just park your dinghy for a couple hours. So today we are in Cuepos at the port captain's office. We've been anchored outside of Cuepos for a couple nights, but we haven't really been able to do much. It's been really rough conditions in the anchorage. And the only way for us to get to town is either come here to the marina and pay them $40 per day to tie up the dinghy, which is a little excessive. Or we can beach the dinghy at high tide and then hike and then catch a taxi to town, which takes a little over an hour to do all of that. So we're going to check out of here in Cuepos and get our national zarpe, which is the document we need to move on to an another place and head to Punta Reynas. So we're here at the port captain's office right now, figuring out the paperwork. And we've got our friends with us from Song of the Sea. They split the uh, dinghy tie-up fee at the marina with us. So we're both doing our zarpes here, and then maybe we'll walk around town a little bit before we head back and get ready to sail tomorrow. Um, anyway, luckily we have seen Cuepos by lands before when we visited Costa Rica a few years ago. So we knew what to expect. And it's beautiful if you're there on vacation and can stay in a resort, but having to find a way to town is a little tricky by water. So today there's no wind, so we decided to take a little fishing trip. So we're headed out. We just passed through a weed line where the water went from like a murky green to a clearer blue. So we're gonna troll around here for a little while and depending on how much time we spend, we'll either spend the night here offshore or we will head in to Punta Arenas. It's a good excuse for us to do some fishing. The fishing here off of Cuepos is pretty good. We saw the sport fishing boats yesterday all piled in there at the marina. So maybe we can get a mahi or a tuna or something to put in our freezer. We just ate breakfast and now we're gonna relax until the fishing lines go off, hopefully. I started filming right before you dropped it and got the first <laughs> smash of the handle. The roar! You smashed against the boat. Oh, <laughs> I lost my laundry bucket. <laughs> you lost your temper. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to grab the bucket. Alright, you grab the bucket. More port. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Oopsies. <laughs> this bucket is very important to me. <laughs> it's the only bucket that has not had a fish in it.
We've got the spinnaker up now. The wind's picked up to about 10 knots, kind of behind us. So we got the spinnaker all rigged up and we've been moving along pretty good. So these last 15 miles or so, we don't have to run the engine, which is nice because I was getting pretty sick of motoring. So we should be arriving into Isla Tortugas in about an hour. Hopefully we'll get anchored before sunset and be able to relax for the night. We're hoping it's a calm anchorage because the last couple anchorages we've been in have not been very pleasant for sleeping. Yeah, I'm definitely glad we were able to put the spinnaker up because we haven't caught any fish. And between no fish and motoring, Gary was a little cranky. A little cranky. <laughs> Just dropped the hook here in about 30 feet, right next to Isla Alcatraz. And the bigger island is Isla Tortuga. And it's a pretty common tourist destination. We can see all the, the facilities on the beach over there. So I think maybe we'll go check it out and play tourist tomorrow. <laughs> maybe, maybe have a nice cold drink on the beach. That sounds fun. There's a sailboat behind us. Yep, just two sailboats in here. There's a big cruise ship over there and there's a like a super yacht anchored as well, but it's nice and quiet and peaceful in here. It's beautiful. These cliffs are stunning. Good night. Okay, so today's our first day here at Isla Tortuga. And unfortunately, we woke up to red tide and we were hoping to snorkel this morning, but I don't think we would see anything in this water. Take a look at how gross it looks. Yeah, so that's a bummer, but we're gonna head over to the tourist beach here and pretend to be tourists today. I'm hoping maybe I can get like a frozen margarita. We just got back to the boat. We didn't spend long on the beach over there. So basically there are charter boats that bring guests from the mainland to Isla Tortuga and then they get to drink rum runners and beers and everything's all included. Um, and they have tables and chairs and umbrellas for them. They did let us walk around the beach and Gary got some drone shots, so that was good. But there really wasn't too much for us to do there. But that's all right, we're just gonna chill on the boat the rest of the day and figure out our game plan as to what is next for us here in Costa Rica. Between the uncomfortable and restricted anchorages, the all-inclusive beaches, and now the beginning of red tide, we were really struggling with what to do next. We are moving bays today. We did a little bit of editing yesterday, but we weren't really able to do any research on where to go next or what our game plan from Costa Rica would be because we don't have any service here, so no Wi-Fi. But we think if we move around about 20 miles towards Punta Arenas that we will get cell phone signal and then we can do some research and figure out what's next. So just a short little hop today and right now there's two knots of wind, so maybe when we get out of the bay, we'll be able to sail, but it'll most likely be another motor. We made it out of the anchorage with the three knot current against us for a short distance. And then we entered into the calm, but extremely dirty red tide water in the Gulf of Nicoya. We 
just got anchored in Isla San Lucas and it's so flat in here. <laughs> so it's a nice change from the anchorages that we've been at. And it was about a four hour motor. We never got any wins. So anyway, they might be honeybees. It was almost as if Costa Rica was testing our patience, because with each new anchorage, we were faced with another challenge. Oh boy, that's gonna piss off. Oh boy. Yeah, they're definitely buzzing more. You can tell they're agitated. There's uh, so many in the kitchen now. I'm hoping they'll go out that hatch. Eventually. Well, I shut the bedroom and the bathroom, so at least we have a safe, safe place. Hmm. It's just bees. Maybe they'll make us some honey. Well, it is just after sunset and our bee swarm finally went away. <laughs> so that's good. We didn't want to have to get rid of them. So nice that they went away on their own. But we've just been spending the afternoon here editing and taking advantage of having data again. <laughs> And tomorrow, hopefully, we'll be able to do a little bit of exploring. Yeah, a mooring that doesn't help us out. What? Said, so, yeah, the mooring doesn't necessarily help us out. Yeah, I see it. to that. What? I can tie it to that. So there is an old prison that is here in this anchorage, is the San Lucas. So we came earlier um, and we were told that we need to make a reservation. So we went back to the boat, made the reservation online, and now we're going to check it out. From 1873 to 1991, San Lucas Island was a penal colony for some of the worst criminals in Costa Rica history. The first building here is the dispensary and hospital. And this whole area um, became part of the with national park system here in Costa Rica in 2020. So a lot of these buildings have just been repaired. Wow. It's the church. It's really cool. Wow. They made art out of all of the writings on the prison cell walls. And it's pretty cool. It's somewhat pornographic. Somewhat. I think we're yeah. going to have to blow some of this out. This is a little Sire Star Pele. Number 10. Next to the church were the medium and maximum security cells. The cell walls were covered in graffiti, which clearly represented the pain, suffering, and loneliness the inmates experienced during their time here.
Ooh, you want in there? Yeah, there's bats in that one. <sighs> Smells like bats. <laughs> so the restoration of this penal colony is really well done. Right now I'm standing in one of the cells. There are cells upstairs and downstairs and yeah just walking through and seeing all the graffiti and the bats flying everywhere. It's, it's pretty wild. What do you think? That's enough bats for me. So we paid 27 US dollars to visit this park here. And we also have to pay for the boat to be anchored here. We're not sure how much that costs yet. Um, but it's it's really nice. It's It's quiet and they have really nice trails that we can walk and there's monkeys everywhere. It's a little different than we expected it to be. Which is always nice when you have low expectations and they're exceeded. Well, we are going to end this episode here, but we hope you join us next time as we continue to face the highs and lows that Costa Rica throws our way. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching.